we go. Michelle, Bob, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Good, good, good. What's um, you doing? I'm, I'm happy for what you're doing. You're doing a phenomenal job, Thank you very first much. of all. I have a question. Um, my parents are visiting, okay? Right. Um, I'm in the process of getting my citizenship. However, um, it was delayed because they had already scheduled me, but I guess the rescheduling process is going on. Right. Um, they actually uh, reached out to me. I have an interview coming up for it. Question to, to you is, for it's my mom and my stepdad. Right. So um, would I be able to file for them here? In the United States, if, if they're if present, they're, if they're visiting, you can and you become a citizen. You can file for the adjustment for your mom. Yes, but you got to wait to become a citizen. Your stepdad, if your mom married your stepdad before you turned eighteen, you would be able to file for him as well. If not, you would not. So the question is, when did they get married? Oh well, they got married about four years ago. How old are you? How old are you? I'm 34. Oh. So the answer is you cannot file for your stepdad. Only your mom would get a green card. Your dad, your stepdad would end up overstaying for a substantial period of time, wait on your mother to get her green card, and then have to turn your mother would have to turn around and file for him as a resident, which will also take several years, unfortunately. Oh, so my mom would have to file for him. Right. After oh, she gets okay. Home. After she, because the only time you can file, the only time you're considered a stepchild of a man who is not, or a woman who is not your biological parent, is if the biological parent married the uh, the non biological parent before your 18th birthday. Okay, and with regards to the Biden situation um, that he's trying to um, come out with. Would that would he would he would he be able to do that part or? Well, uh, if he was right now, we don't know what they're going to be coming out with. They have not actually presented to the world their legislation. All we have heard so far is what's been reported in the news, which is that if you are out of status on January first, twenty twenty one, and you are physically in the United States you would be eligible to get some sort of conditional status through an amnesty that will eventually turn into a green card in five years. So the first question is, is was he out of status on January 1st? And you're going to tell me, no, he's here on a visitor's visa. But that, you know, you can still in the old amnesty from Ronald Reagan time, you know what people would do is that when they were here in legal status on a visitor's visa, or on a student visa, they would then admit that they had worked while on their visas when they were not allowed to work, and that then be made them out of status. They violated their visa status and then made them eligible for an amnesty. I'm sure many people will start admitting they were working uh, while on a legal visa that didn't allow them to work to show that they violated their status to get an amnesty. I'm sure people will be doing that. Okay, and so you're saying once my mom get her 10 years, then she would be able to put, do his paperwork then? Assuming the law doesn't change, correct. Everything, okay. the law, if we believe that the law is going to change, everything I'm telling you is out the window, so we'll have to see. Okay. All right. And how long does it take uh, for, like, for if when I do it for my parents, like for my mom, sorry, how long if, does that process take? In, in Virginia, I would say about a year from the start to finish from the time you put the papers in to adjust. And can you do it yes. because you're in New York? Can yes. you do it for us? Yes. And I'll tell you why. A, I'm allowed as an immigration attorney admitted in the state of New York, I'm allowed to practice it with the immigration service in all 50 states and every embassy around the world. So I can do it in all 50 states and around the world. And what the uh, immigration service does now, in the past, we used to have to fly to Virginia or drive to Virginia or fly to California or fly to Texas to go for interviews. But now what it, the immigration service allows, both in court and for immigration interviews at USCIS, is they allow the lawyer to be there telephonically or by a video conference. So while we're in our office 
in New York by telephone or video conference representing you before the judge or before the immigration service, you're physically there. So we can do it in all 50 states and we do it straight from New York. Okay. Right. I appreciate you. Right, and another you question. Yes. Uh, what's the affidavit? Like, I know I have to have um, make a certain amount of money um, for, like, filing for my mom. How much would that, that have to be? Depends on how many people you have to support. I have two kids. And are you married? Yes. All right. So you're a family of four. Right. All right. So as a family of four, uh, you st this is the, the general rule of thumb. Start at $20,000 for you sponsoring somebody too. Okay. And now your three additional people add 4,000 per person. So that's four, eight, 12, 32,000. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Very I welcome. appreciate it. I'll be okay. reaching out to your office. Okay. Be well. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.